Now you may have noticed that there is one brand of electric unicycle that have been conspicuously missing from my videos. I have reviewed the 16X from Kingston as well as given plenty of opinion about my own Gotway Monster and of course there is my favorite wheel the 9 baht z10 however i have never ridden an in motion wheel that's going to change today since we're reviewing their latest release the vaf this week we try out the latest mid-range offering from in motion and see how it stack up to the competition we'll try to answer the question is this the perfect casual starter wheel for someone who's just getting into electric unicycle roll the intro As always, if you enjoy the video, please like and subscribe and stay tuned to the end for a preview of what's coming up next. Thirty-second intro. This is the VAF, the latest release from In Motion. It carries a thousand-watt motor, has a twenty-two miles range, and a top-end speed of twenty-one point seven miles per hour, which makes it one of the fastest mid-range electric unicycle available. By the way, quick disclaimer: this wheel was provided by eWheel for review purposes only. I wasn't paid for the review, and all the opinions expressed are my own. Now there may be a whole lot more excitement surrounding a top end electric unicycle like the Gateway Nikola or the Kingston 16X, but I suspect that for most people who aren't ready to commit to a two or three thousand dollar electric unicycle, the VAF would be on the short list for consideration. no small matter for you see there are two market entry strategy the tesla route where you build a high-end high performance aspirational model to get everyone excited for your brand or you take the honda route who entered the u.s auto market via the introduction of the honda super cub and the brilliant you meet the nicest people on honda ad campaign and popularize your brand via low cost and easy to own model so that your customer base can learn about your value proposition firsthand and in case if you're not aware of the insane impact they had in that first year when Honda first started marketing the Super Cup, they also every single motorcycle manufacturer there is combined. That is the brilliance of having a gray mid-range option, a much easier entry point for everyone else who's not a die-hard enthusiast. And unsurprisingly, Emotion has said that the VA had been their most popular electric unicycle model. The VA didn't become as popular as it did because of top end speed nor range. It was popular because it was a reasonably priced wheel that is easy to live with. So to properly review the VAF, I think we have to talk more than just about its right quality, but what it's really like to live with and to travel with the wheel. And I have the perfect test for it. Every Saturday morning, I take an 11 mile subway ride with Kelly out to Flushing where she works so we can have yummy breakfast together. Then I ride 4.5 miles to my parents' house to see them and after that, a 9 mile ride back home. A reasonable long bimodo trip and a good test on what it would be like to commute with this wheel. Now I've done the same trip several times on both the Gateway Monster as well as my favorite Z10. They're both wonderful wheels, of course, but they're both also very, very heavy wheels, which make dragging them up and down subway stairs not a lot of fun. So the Z10 also have a trolley handle, which is handy to have. However, as you can see, it's on the back of the wheel and much further from the axle itself, which make pivoting the wheel while you're pushing it slightly trickier. The trolley handle on the VAF, on the other hand, does work better. It positively latched with a button release on the top and being center mounted, it is easier to pivot and control the wheel. The trolley on the Kingston wheel are slightly better since the handle straddled diagonally over the wheel axle 
and is better balanced, but the VAF trolley is fine. Keep in mind that having a trolley handle is one of the best things about the electric unicycle since it makes pushing around absolutely effortless. So it's a huge plus if you have a solid trolley handle mechanism because it is definitely a feature that you will be using on a regular basis. So my only gripe is that you have to press this button all the way in in order to pop the handle out which may be a little bit difficult if you have thicker finger or if you're wearing gloves by the way keep in mind that a 30 pound electric unicycle is going to be way easier to hand carry than a similarly weighed electric scooter since it's a lot more compact and easier to manage the subway ride out to Flushing requires a transfer in Queens to the above ground 7 train, which offers a spectacular view of its route through Queens, definitely should be on the list of things to do if you ever visit. And just like that, we got the VAF through the subway system. Now I've done the same trip with both an electric scooter as well as a floating bike. And I gotta say that this by far was the easier trip to make. Now I've also done the same thing with my IPA Sci Fi, which was an even lighter electric unicycle. But the problem with the i5 is that it does not have a trolley handle, which means that you would have to hand carry it all the time. Oh, and breakfast! This is our favorite soup dumpling spot in Flushing for now since competition is fierce. And if you've never had one, it is a steamed dumpling made with its filling floating in a rich broth inside the dumpling. It had to be made and steamed on the spot and eaten within minutes of it being served, but boy is it good. So it's actually pretty cold out today. 20 to 30 degree weather like today is going to take your range down by almost a half. Something you should definitely be aware of if you live in cold climates like here in New York City. By the way, I had originally planned on making both legs of the trip, which is a combine of about 15 miles on one charge. But since it's really cold today, I'm going to have to check to see where my battery percentage by the time I get to my parents and maybe plug it in so I can at least make it home today. The V8 defined the mid-tier electric unicycle performances and the VAF improves on all of its metrics. It's capable of a top speed of 21 miles per hour, but you're probably more likely to be cruising at about 18 to 19 miles per hour, which is still decently fast. Now, I always had a hard time defining what that speed really means, but you're basically faster than a casual, relaxed bicyclist, about as fast as someone who's pushing on a regular bicycle, but you're not going to be able to beat the spandex guy on a road bike really raging for speed. The motor does feel slightly anemic when pushed to the maximum speed, but for most people cruising at 18 to 19 miles per hour is probably more than enough. Now speed throttling is a bit aggressive on the VAF as in motion is usually pretty conservative when it comes to their wheel. Casual rider will probably appreciate this since it leaves a larger buffer before the dreaded cutout, which is when the rider overpowers the wheel causing it to shut down mid ride a very 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 bad thing since it will always lead to a crash. Alright, so things didn't go according to plan. I knew that the snow was coming, however I was hoping that I can beat it and this is not looking very promising. So I'm gonna skip and take the subway back instead of riding all the way back since Metropolitan Avenue, the road I typically take to go home, it's a little bit treacherous. It's rather narrow and car tend to speed so I'd rather not risk it. I'm curious how the uh, VAF is going to handle this sort of condition. So 
I got home fine yesterday and luckily it didn't take very long for the uh, street to be clear of snow today. So the other advantage of having a light wheel is maneuverability. There's a lot less mass for you to be throwing around so it makes it easier to turn. On top of it, the VAF is also pretty well balanced so that certainly helps as well. So I'm gonna try a few different things. So what do I think of the VAF? Well, it is not terribly exciting. However, it has no pretense, I think, to be anything but that either. This really is the Honda Civics of the electric unicycle world. It'll get you from point A to point B conveniently, relatively quickly, and in a safe manner. But in a small way, I do wish that it could have been a little bit more in terms of design and finishes. Since this wheel is at a price point that is much more digestible to the general public, it is also here where better design and little convenient touches would go a long way in convincing a casual rider to get into the electric unicycle market. After all, this is a product that costs as much as a top-of-the-line iPhone but doesn't really quite have that premium feel just yet. I do have to say, if you are someone who's looking to get into the electric unicycle market and is not hard up on top speed or specification and is just looking for a convenient replacement of your bicycle, the Motion VAF is basically everything you can possibly ask for in a wheel. Oh, look at the time! I somehow managed to once again trick you into wasting another 10 minutes of your life watching my silly videos. And if you're new to my channel, I mostly talk about electric unicycle and other rideable. And if you're interested in getting in on the action and enjoy what you just watched, like and subscribe to my channel, please! And of course, I would greatly appreciate it if you would tell a friend about my channel since I'm terrible with marketing. Until the next video, thank you. And in the next episode, watch as I stray once again off the righteous path that is the electric unicycle and attempt to fumble my way into learning how to ride an electric skateboard, the boosted stealth.